Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Virgo, Sun, Moon or Ascendant. If you don't know what your Moon or Ascendant signs are, have a look in the description box below. There's a link down there that will help you. And uh, once you know your signs, you should come back and watch the videos for your Moon and Ascendant signs because <clears throat> you might find that they uh, resonate with you better. Or they just give you a bit uh, bigger, better picture of what's going on with you overall than you might get ordinarily from just your sun sign. Mercury retrograde is in full swing at the moment and uh, <clears throat> my technology is cacking up, I cannot speak. Everything is, uh, yes, retrograding. <clears throat> Anywho, smoke in here all of a sudden. I hope you will. There's a couple of things I wanted to say. What did I say? Ah, woo. Thank you to all those people who have come over to Patreon and started to support me over there. Um, your support means more to me than you will ever know. I think it's become increasingly clear now that I take what I do here very, very seriously. And um, it's not a hobby, right? This is kind of life calling stuff. So um, when I find people who value what I do as much as I do, um, gives me the warm and fuzzy. So thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> I pre appreciate the vote of confidence. Uh, the other thing is next Tuesday, which is the 7th of July, marks my one year anniversary on YouTube. Woo. And I kind of feel like uh, celebrating, actually. I think it's kind of a thing. So um, I'm going to do a live stream, but I'm not doing it on the Tuesday. I'm doing it on this kind of Sunday, which is the 5th of July, um, just because it's a better day for a party than uh, a Tuesday night. No one wants to party on a school night. And I can't do it on a Saturday because I just don't have the sort of staying power anymore that I used to have. So if you fancy joining me for that, I'm going to pull some cards. I'm going to limit it to one question, one card answers, just to get through as many people as possible. But um, I'll do a giveaway. I'm going to give away free reading and, and maybe, maybe some books, something like that. <clears throat> so... Like I said, it's the fifth. It's uh, it's already scheduled, so if you have a look on my channel, it'll be on there somewhere. And uh, I would love to see you there. So I think that's everything. I'm so sorry for uh, for the wait. It was unavoidable, but uh, I appreciate you waiting for me. Again, I appreciate you. So let's have a look and see what's going on with you, Virgo. Can I have three cards for Virgo, please? Oh, I like that. So the first card that we've got is the Eight of Swords, but it fell in the reverse. Magnificent. I love it. Let's have a look. Virgo's current energy. Mm. That's interesting. The tower has come out in reverse. Gonna need some clarifiers for that. And what's coming towards Virgo? Five of Cups. All right, let's not panic about this. We've got the Six of Swords at the bottom of the deck. That is movement. It's movement away from difficult circumstances, thing that's, things that you have found sort of tricky in the past. And certainly for the last year, Virgo, you've been kind of going through it. So let's see which deck we want to use to clarify. In your own time? Yeah, all right, I'll go with that one. Why is the Eight of Swords here, please? There we go. We've got the Strength and the Two of Pentacles. Beautiful. What I thought. It's certainly along the lines of what I expected to see. Tell me about this tower. Why is this tower here? Oh. We've got the world. Why is the tower here? Why is the tower here? Eight of Cups. Okay. And where's the five of cups here? The card's catapulting out all over. We've got the Wheel of Fortune. That's interesting. And the Four of Wands. Right. Might well need some more cards, I think. <clears throat> At the bottom of this deck, we've got the Queen of Pentacles. Now, that is strictly Capricorn, but obviously it's an Earth Queen, so it's you. And she talks to me about the importance of self-care, nurturing yourself, making sure that you're taking care of your needs, not just in a mechanical way, you know, not just kind of like shoveling food in because food needs to be eaten. Talking about, you know, really, really taking the time to look after yourself, whether that's, you know, finding yourself some quiet time, reading a book, having a bath, all that kind of thing, or a bit of exercise. 
things that allow for a bit of mental decompression here and there, right? Things that make you feel cared for by you. So, this is quite an intriguing reading and there's kind of a lot going on here. So I'm going to unpack it as best I can, but I feel like the major unpacking is probably going to happen in the extended. <laughs> but we'll try and go over it as best we can. Now, the first card that you've got is the Eight of Swords in reverse, and I could not be more delighted to see this for you, Virgo, because this way around, as you know, it talks about feeling trapped. It feels like it, it talks about feeling like there's no route out of anything, anywhere, right? <clears throat> the thing is, because it's it's swords, we're talking about, more often than not, we're talking about somebody feeling trapped by the contents of their own heads, right? It's kind of stuck in a place and not really knowing where to go. The thing is, when it comes out in the reverse, it is, by definition, coming out of that energy, right? This is an energy that no longer applies to you. You're coming out the other side of it. It's in your recent past. But it's like, sometimes this way around, I see this card as somebody waiting to be saved, right? It's kind of someone sitting at the bottom of a pit going, someone please come and white knight me. Come and fucking rescue me because I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't know how to do any of these things. And it's it's quite possible to see how Virgo as a sign has been kind of sat in that energy, at least some of you as a collective, been sat in that energy for quite a long time during the course of you know the first half of this year. But it seems like you've really found your feet. I know you've been turning a corner I saw it happen in the last few readings but those things that kept you trapped those things that kept you restricted I feel like you're starting to see now where the limitations were in place they were kind of of your creation which is not to say that the reason that you ended up in there in the first place was of your creation because I think for a lot of people there has been uh, notions of, of loss you know whether those are relationships or people or you know <clears throat> anything along those kind of lines like <sighs> feeling trapped, starting to see now that you and you alone are the only person who can get you out of that hole and starting to climb, right? Turning a corner, making a new start. When you're right at the bottom of somewhere, the only way you can really go is up. And it's like, it's almost like you've taken these swords and you've fashioned a ladder out of them now. You know, all those things that restricted you and limited you in some way. You're like, okay, I see you for what you are. Now I'm going to use you for my betterment. I'm going to climb. I'm going to keep climbing, right? <clears throat> now, the, the thing that I that makes this even more profound is, is the two clarifiers that we have underneath because we've got strength and we've got the two of pentacles. Now, as we know, like strength is the card of Leo, but it talks about growth to me. <clears throat> talks about a lot of things, actually. And principally, it talks about things being very fucking hard because you don't see the strength card when everything's going well, when everything's easy. This is the strength that is forged from surviving adverse circumstances. And you may not have come out entirely unscathed you might be scarred and you know have kind of like <sighs> tatty ears like a you know cat that's been fighting but you got there in the end and more than that you are now picking yourself up by the scruff of the neck and moving forwards and in doing so you have grown immeasurably as a soul right <clears throat> think about those uh, those weeds that pop up in between you know bits of tarmac and stuff like that. I've got a fucking tree, right? <clears throat> Growing out of uh, one of those uh, like woven food bags in my backyard that's kind of full of bits to go to the allotment, you know, kind of like old like bits of soil out of plant pots and stuff like that. And, and and this tree has just started growing in it. It started obviously as a seed at some point dropped in there. But now there's things like this big and I'm kind of like, <sighs> I just let you grow and then plant you somewhere really you know it's strong right it can survive now because it's survived you as a soul have survived so much now that everything else kind of feels a little like child's play right the the perspective that you've had on the world has shifted right you are different you are you you're a bigger version of you than you were before and it's just going to increase We've got the Two of Pentacles here, and that talks about balance, right? And that's the thing that you have been looking for. The ability to balance yourself. 
because all of these cards talk about doing it for yourself as they are here right <clears throat> Whatever you've suffered, and there was great emotional turmoil at one point, you know, and you weren't... I say this often, right, but the, the Two of Pentacles for me is the card that differs the most, one of them at least, anyway, that differs the most from deck to deck in the way that it is depicted. You know, some of the characters look positively gleeful at what they're pulling off. Some of them are, you know, doing gymnastic feats of you know, <clears throat> endurance holding particular poses and stuff. And then others look completely stricken. Others look like they're about to be washed away, right? It's been hard and you haven't enjoyed it, but ultimately you are the person who has righted yourself. You are the one who is now being able to juggle these resources, whatever they are to you, you know, emotional resources, your time, your money, your care, your effort, all of these things. You're in charge of it all, right? <clears throat> you brought balance to yourself. Now, the card that you've got in your current energy is the tower, but it came out in reverse and I'm, I'm slightly perplexed about this. I don't, I, I kind of feel like I don't know whether I want to put it the right way up or not. Right? This way up, it's a sudden shocking energy that kind of comes in and, 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 and pulls down all the structures in your life that you, you relied on, that you cared for, you know, that you took shelter in, in some ways. But the reason that the energy did that was because whatever those towers were, whatever it was that you were seeking solace within, it wasn't actually up to the job. One good lightning strike and that thing's just falling down. Now, sometimes it's because it was never built properly in the first place, and other times it's because it wasn't maintained. You know, take it as it resonates to you. But it's generally a shock. It's something that comes in and it's like nothing is the same after the, the uh, energy of the tower is hit. <clears throat> it changes the way that you see the world. Now, when you reverse a card, it doesn't just mean the exact and equal opposite of what it means the right way up. Sometimes it can talk about a block on this energy coming through. Sometimes it can talk about a delay. Sometimes it can mean literally the exact opposite. <clears throat> And I might pull another card to get some clarification before I talk too much more about that. But let's go to the clarifiers here. The first two that we've got. We've got the world and we've got the eight of cups. And I like this for you, Virgo, because this is an acknowledgement that you have completed a cycle now. Like we've seen this in the last couple of readings. This new start has been all over it. And you're definitely on your way. Right? You're moving now in a way that you haven't done in quite some time. Tied up an old cycle and you're starting a new one. But more than that, right? it feels like you're kind of taking ownership of the end of a cycle now because for a lot of Virgos in the collective, whatever it was that was ending that took so very long, Right, it, it, you firstly you didn't accept it for a long time, but the other thing was it was kind of thrust upon you. Is how it feels. It, it wasn't really at your instigation. You just were kind of reeling from it all. <clears throat> this is you now taking ownership of the of the ending, right? And that's a really really powerful energy. There, you're taking ownership of it and you're taking responsibility for it, and you are decisively making your decision. Of course you're decisively making a decision. You are decisively choosing the route that you take now. And you can see now that, 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 that whatever emotional fulfillment there, were, that there was for you here, as depicted by these eight cards, that source of emotional support, you know, whatever nourishment it was that you took from those cups, is now not open to you in the way that it was. And rather than sitting there and, you know, just looking baffled, you're like, okay, right, it's time for me to go looking for something else. Now, this tower, what is this tower about? <clears throat> Honestly, the more I look at it, the more it feels like acceptance. 
because you know what I said when the tower comes in it's very sudden it's very shocking you know you're reeling from it all that kind of thing it's it feels like a testament to the fact that the dust has settled now that the initial shock of everything is over and now you know increasingly you're looking at the practical aspects of what there is left you know maybe you're looking at the rubble of the tower and seeing if there's is there enough left over that that would be you know worthy of building with that you can kind of pull out of this building site can you rebuild the tower can you build it somewhere else you know what, what can you do with it it's like the shock of it all has gone away now and there's the hermit card there it's just flipped the wrong way around in the deck <clears throat> It feels like acceptance and moving into a state of processing, which is fantastic. You know, you're already away on a new start, but sometimes we can start new things and then neglect to tie up the, uh, the energetic loose ends that are left by whatever has just completed. But this feels like you are stepping on your way, you're moving into new things, but you're also taking the time to reflect and to tie up the loose ends and make sure that there's nothing kind of dragging along behind you. Acceptance of it, you know, it's, it's very mature actually. Tell me about this reversed tower. I need to know about this reversed tower. Ooh. <clears throat> We've got judgment and the devil. The judgment is in reverse. You look like the one and the same creature though. This kind of winged, fiery, skeletal thing. It feels like you're facing your demons now. And the thing about that is that when you face them down, quite often they don't, they lose their power. You know, the, the, these demons that operate in the background from the shadow, from from a place of, of fear and all that kind of thing, they only really have any power when you don't turn around and look them straight in the eye. It's when they're whispering in your ear, it's when you're trying to sleep at night and they're, you know, making you afraid of X, Y, and Z because there's such complete acceptance and ownership and all of that kind of thing going on here. Like you are, whether you realize it or not, turning around to face your demons and you're watching them dissipate in front of you. It's like, A friend of mine has a saying, um, and he just says, it is what it is, right? And it, it's, it's such a simple phrase, but it conveys quite a lot of profundity, right? Because you've got acceptance of something that you cannot change, acceptance of this being the new reality. You know, it's, it's that quote, you know, God give me the... <clears throat> the fortitude to change those things that can be changed and the grace to accept those things that can't you know I don't, I'm sure it's better than what I just said but you you take my point it's that kind of feeling about it it is what it is now your life is what it is and there's some rubble from towers that have fallen but there are bright shining lights of new starts here there and everywhere but you are and i can't stress this enough how pleased i am to see this you are taking the time to get comfortable with the new normal, with the new reality, but also being reflective enough to tie up all of the loose ends, right? Taking ownership of the situation. I'm so proud. I fucking love it. <clears throat> it's a really emotionally mature standpoint. And it's interesting because you fought this for so long, right? But now you're actually here when you're turning around and you're facing your demons and you're like, it is what it is. What, what have you got? You know? What have you got? Nothing. You haven't even got any muscles. What are you going to do? Wave a bone at me. The card that you've got coming towards you for July is the Five of Cups. Now, initially when I saw this, I was a little bit like, uh -huh. but actually, not what you've got to clarify it. Wheel of Fortune and the Four of Wands. I'm going to pull some more cards for this, but this feels less like you are going to be stuck in this energy and more like you are refusing to get stuck in this energy anymore, right? Let's break this card down. It's the five of cups, right? So cups, it's feelings, it's emotions, it's uh, emotional situations, it's all that kind of thing, right? 
the five is about a shift. It's about a change, you know. If the four is a foundational energy, the five is the energy that comes along like the agents of chaos and blows that shit up, right? It doesn't do it just to be, you know, mean. It does it for a reason. It's because whatever it is requires adjustment. It requires refining in some way. Or there is a lesson somewhere in what has just occurred for you to pick up, move away from and integrate at a later date, right? <clears throat> The thing with the, the Five of Cups is that when you are in this state, it is all-encompassing. Like You literally cannot, cannot see your way out of it. Because in order to express, well, to feel gratitude for these two cups that are here, you have to be able to see them, right? You have to be able to see them to acknowledge that they're there in the first place. And this is an all-encompassing energy of grief, right? Looking down, staring at those cups, you can't raise your head cannot turn away you cannot employ the objectivity that is required to stand back from the situation not be completely you know lost in a whirlpool of emotion that this this entails so that you can see that there were actually five cups in total and two of them are still upright now I would feel like this was you sliding backwards if it was not for the Wheel of Fortune and the Four of Wands here. It seems to me more like an objective look at the energy that you may have been in for some time this year. It's like being... <clears throat> Do you know what? It's like being depressed. Like... People can tell you that you're depressed and you're just like, nah, I'm just, you know, just don't really have any energy. I just can't really be asked, you know, that sort of thing. The only time at which you really acknowledge that you're depressed is when you start to come out the other side and you kind of look back and you go, oh, shit, I, I was in a really dark place there. When you're in a really, really dark place, it isn't always immediately obvious. And this is something that I think that you're starting to realize. Obviously, when you've got shocking events going on and you're kind of reeling from it and you're like, oh my God, this thing has happened. And you're talking to people and you're like, this thing has happened, my fucking life's collapsed, you know, all this kind of thing. And everybody goes, oh my God. <clears throat> then you can kind of see that you're in a dark place, but sometimes that dark place kind of creeps up on you, right? And it, it just it expresses itself in, in, in uh, you know, lethargy or, you know, disinterest in things, anything, you know, you kind of want to sleep or maybe you can't sleep or maybe you want to eat or you don't want to eat, you know, it, it's just a kind of meh and it holds you very close, right? And it's not until you kind of move out of it a little bit and you look back and you go, oh shit, I was right in the grip of it there. How did I not notice? How did I not know? This feels what, like, what this is for you Virgo right the, the whole month of July and let's not forget we are in Mercury retrograde now and for the next couple of weeks we will continue to be there I think it's three including the shadow period right it is a period of reflection it is a period of tying up loose ends absolutely but it's a, it's it's looking back at things with this kind of gentle reflective energy <clears throat> and I think that you're going to look back and you're going to see how how much you felt like you were drowning because I don't think that you've I don't think that you've seen it yet and it's an important lesson it's a really important lesson for you let's get some more clarifiers <clears throat> because if nothing else it shows you how strong you are right? it shows you how you hold yourself by the back of the neck out of that situation and to the other side and then I'll Here. Yeah, that's beautiful. Shit. Just one card would be nice. Okay. Ooh, holy shit. Right. <clears throat> Doing it by halves, Virgo. We've got the world at the bottom of the deck, right? Like I said before, an ending, a true ending, a 
full end of a cycle where you are not the same person that not only you were when you went into this cycle, but actually during the long drawn out end of the cycle, you're not the same person. Directly underneath that, we've got the Ace of Pentacles. You know, when you, when you tear down internal towers, when you experience difficult situations, and, and then you come out the other side and you start indulging in exercises of, of resolution okay? and an acceptance of completion. You clear out a lot of space. Right? It, it changes the way you see everything. It loosens, it, I mean, it loosens all the baggage that you've been carrying with you and some of this I don't feel is even related to whatever it was that, that caused the end of the cycle, you know, the catalyst that brought it along. Some of this is stuff that you've been dragging along for, 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 for your entire life, you know. <laughs> We've got this, this is incredible. Like, <clears throat> it's that profound ending, there's that new start. And here's the Ten of Pentacles, like you've grown in strength now so that you can provide for yourself something, um, something that's right for you, something that is committed, something that is stable. And this doesn't have to be with someone else, I feel, because I feel like you've really now started to understand how strong you are and how your thoughts, how your perception affects the world around you. Right? You, it's the removal of these limitations that you put on yourself for whatever reason they've been there. And they're always protective initially, but then they come to a point where they limit you. You know? I just don't think that that you're ever going to go back to where you have been. Because we've got some pretty fucking profound cards here. Right? We've got the Empress, we've got Death, and we've got the Hanged Man. This is in addition to the Wheel of Fortune, right? There's something for you to learn in this reflective energy that you're going to sit in in July. And I think part of it is never allowing yourself to get to the point where you lose sight of the things that you are grateful for, right? I don't think you're ever going to let yourself get to here again. Now, for some of you, it could be because you were over-invested in whatever it was that was lost. That's possible. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. But for others of you, you know, however it's happened, whether it's been the loss of a relationship or an actual, you know, bereavement or whatever it is, you've survived. You've come out the other end and you are changed. Completely changed, right? The Empress augurs a new start, but this is this is a new start of, of uh, abundance. Right? Just as is promised here by the uh, the Wheel of Fortune, it's the Mother card as well. So you know, if you have kids, this could be you know a, a seeing of how what you've been struggling with has kind of taken you away from your primary kind of like objective of wanting to provide for them. That's one way of seeing it. But even if you are not a mother, right, the, the Empress card is all about the new things coming in. And in order for new things to come in, the old things have to go, right? Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know, I say that death within the, the ending in death, there is an inherent beginning because you don't get an ending without a new beginning, it's clearing space, it's transforming the space. And the space that you have to transform is this, that you have been in. Now, the way that you transform it in July is by kind of picking it over and analysing it. Don't need to tell Virgo how to analyse things. <clears throat> Seeing it for what it is and starting to kind of confront it, right? Change your perspective on what it is learning the lessons and the higher wisdom that has come off the back of this experience that you've had. Right? And it will be more severe for some of you than for others, but I genuinely do not think that you'll ever let yourself get back to that place where you do not feel gratitude for something in your life. Right? Because you're surrounded by beautiful things, you are rich beyond measure should you stop 
to look at that and see it. And I think, Virgo, you do see that now, right? And it's time to build a new foundation for yourself because there's four of wands. This is about the things that you celebrate. It's, it's about those people that feel like home to you. It's drawing them towards you, you know? It is actively taking part in creating a new existence for you. And it's going to be palpably different to what you've experienced so far, where you were kind of not entirely in control of what was going on. Like you are now because you're in control of yourself and your primary objective is to create something beautiful, something to sit in that makes you feel like you have things to be grateful of, things to be you know, excited about, things to celebrate. Right? It's been a huge teaching moment for you and, and the amount of major arcana here towards the end of July. So this process is super, super important because this will clear out all of the energetic baggage that could potentially slow you down on your new start, on your, you know, the turning of the corner that we've had for you. Like, it feels very profound what's going on, on here. Virgo. It's a lot of major stuff. There's a lot of upending energies, looking at things differently, being different, accepting yourself as being different. I love it. Actually, I'm all about this. So I'm going to leave it here. Um, if this has resonated with you, join me over at the extended. There's a link to the Vimeo in the description box. But if not, um, well fucking done you growth, big fucking growth. And I'll see you for mid-months. Take care.